We thought it was just going to be the yes. standard situation where Justin right. lost the first round and yep. then was like, I got you figured out. Yep. But great adjustment on his part, and he baited a lot of things out from Justin. Yeah. And so good stuff yeah. to him. Yeah. Highlight was that baiting out the EX Messiah and going into Ultra 2. Yeah, that was, that, so was good, that was That some was some smart so stuff. Yeah. All got right. Justin, Look. you know what? Justin never changes characters. You know, he's very stubborn about that. He's always like, I will stick with this character That's and figure true. out how to beat you. And now he's changing characters and getting further in tournaments. Yeah, but. Winning them. Someone got him to change characters. Uh -huh. That's it as a accomplishment <laughs> in and of itself. So it is. There you go. All right. Well, coming up next, it looks like we have Red Bull Snake Eyes. Okay. Versus Mr. Trite. STC Mr. Trite. STC Mr. Trite. All right, Snake Eyes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Coming up here with that six Zangief outfit again. Going up against Abel. Now, this was one of those matches that when it started out, it yeah. was like Zangief destroyed Abel. Yeah, and then they started learning about the tech and like uh -huh. Abel being able to grab Geef out of everything and then it just switched up. <laughs> yep. But now, what do, you, what do you? Where does it rest now? I think it's a pretty even fight. Mm. Both of them have such an advantage when they knock the other one down. Yeah. So like, just going for meaty tornado throw is such a good tactic yeah. against yeah. Zangi. Oh wow, he's. Oh, he had the read on the jump. Jeez. Snake, snake eyes, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, wow, we he just went for it. And with just like that, he has a life lead. Yeah. <gasps> Wow, that backdash, though. He chased it down. And oh, it gets oh, a tornado throw. Oh, there it is, that meaty tornado throw. Well, and if you guys could see the hype here in the crowd, this is definitely... Oh, and they're chanting, they're chanting STC. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Mr. Trite with a good start there takes that first round. Okay. Oh. Yeah, nice. see, that's the hard. He convinced him not to jump with those low shorts, and then he gets him with that jump. Oh, oh God. Builds a little <laughs> extra yeah. meter. It's a little stuff. meter. Good stuff, Snake. Get that. Well, both of them are almost sitting on full bars. So this is going to be good stuff. Let's see what STC does to stop the beast. That is Snake. Oh, Snake, I just walked in forward. Yep, this round is going to determine if STC stands for such a tough competitor or standard tournament jump. Let's go. Wow, James. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, nice lariat there. And Snake Eyes going in in the corner. Oh, oh, oh no. he made it out. He made it out. Here we go. STC with the read to neutral jump. Is this going to kill? Not quite. Oh, oh. wow. Oh, Look at no, this, we're down to the wire. Oh, no. Oh, oh my Snake God, that actually that. killed. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and you can even see the relief on yeah. Snake Eyes' face. This is he was like, holy crap, Ooh. wow. Oh. Uncle Valle probably whispering some inappropriate things in Snake Eyes' ear, as Uncle Valle usually does. <laughs> <laughs> STC. Let's go, Mr. Trite. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Let's go. Okay. Starting off strong again. Nice. Yo, the crowd is going nuts for this dude. I like that. <laughs> Every hit, wow. they get hype. Uh-oh. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, so Snake Eyes does as a read because a lot of players just notice he always does low short, low short, low short, low short because they try to jump away. Yep, yep, yep. But twice now he's gone for low short into SPD, so he's noticed that Trite is not oh, trying wow. to... Oh, wow, he was bashing SPD. Even Snake Eyes turns the butter. <laughs> there you go, you got to learn. Oh, yeah, can't be jumping at Zangief like that. Ooh. Mm, he's chasing him down. He is chasing him down. You're not escaping. Alright, Snake Eyes also now sitting on a full meter. 
Yeah. Definitely willing to just use that EX Red Focus combo right away. Right. Ooh, nice neutral jump fierce. Oh, here we go. Twice with the neutral jump fierce from Snake Eyes. So probably a stun. Oh, no, not quite. Oh, it was neutral fierce, not the headbutt. Right, right, right. Okay. Mm. Okay. Ooh. Okay, wow. okay, okay, okay. Oh, all right, yeah, he knows it's done. He knew <laughs> yeah, it was done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He knew it was done. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. I don't think he was just a standard tournament. No, 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 chump, not, at all, said, not at all, not I at all. I think he actually showed, dis displayed uh, signs of being a very tough competitor. Yeah, yeah, And absolutely. look at that, he still gets an applaud from everybody. Yep. I think I just saw someone mention that uh, STC... Someone said it's like Scarborough Town, but I, there's a C is missing in there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, okay. not exactly entirely sure. Yeah, what it stood for, but yeah. But shout out to him. I mean, that was actually a pretty strong effort. Yeah. It, I mean, it was very apparent that he, he knew the matchup. Yeah, which I, is what I like. He so. did great in the beginning, and then Snake Eyes just mauled him at the end. Yeah, uh, unfortunately for him. Uh, but uh, it was a good, definitely one of my favorite matches already. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were swinging, they were going, you know, wasn't any lame stuff going on. Yep, they both sure. held forward the whole time. Wasn't sloppy. Was not sloppy. There was nothing sloppy about that. <laughs> that was some good Street Fighter. Yeah, I think everybody stuff, enjoyed that. And coming up next, it looks like we're going to have Akira from Japan mm -hmm. versus 801 mm -hmm. Strider. It's going to be a good match, but before we get in that match, just want to give a shout out to everybody on the stream. Thanks, everybody That's right. tuning in to Canada Cup. This is a this is a crazy event, and so... Too many people here, man. Too, this is like, uh, it was right before I went on commentary. Oh my gosh, guys. k so, uh Oh, K-Brad is challenging you. He's challenging From you right now. From across the room? From across, let's do it, Mike. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, Tommy okay. Wayne, you ready? Yeah. Bodied, done. You suck. K-Brad just got bodied. Uh, sorry about that, folks. Sometimes I get challenged. It's very difficult for me to refuse it. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. K Brad, I think right now our record in rock paper scissors is probably twenty seven to one. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. he beat me earlier for some reason. I don't know how. It's like, it's like it's one of those situations where like you know when Bruce Lee used to walk around the street, some random guy would jump out and challenge him from yeah. like across the street or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, that's where you're <laughs> dealing with right that's now. That's what with, it is with K Brad. With K -Brad yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know. You know. You're just like walking down the street, yeah. and all of a sudden K Brad jumps yeah, exactly. out, and there it is. Somebody's so. calling me out. Oh, there's the Hulk. The Hulk is back. Oh, the Hulk. Yeah, there he is. Oh yeah, Look at there that he face. is. Look at it, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, why is he wearing that? What is this problem? This is too good. You guys will see him later, I'm aren't, sure. Aren't you a little short to be no, the no, incredible look at this Hulk? Guy. Yeah, look at this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Hulk smash! <laughs> He's just punking people. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Guy, this guy is happy to be here at Canada. The guy in the tank top over there. <laughs> yeah. That shout out to him. That's yeah. Drew Face. He was the one giving yeah. me a lot of information <laughs> okay. on stream yesterday. He also oh, said yeah. he's the hype man for. <laughs> oops. <laughs> oh. Never mind. <laughs> hey. I take my shout outs back. <laughs> yeah. I got some. Never see Rogue cosplay. I can respect that. Rogue. Yeah, all right. Okay. The classic okay. Rogue cosplay. Nice. Like nice. Classic Rogue. Got the jacket and all. Yep. Happy Halloween, everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just the comments, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't talk about the Hulk like that. Okay. <laughs> that was an accurate representation of Hulk. I'm intimidated. I'm scared. Scared because he's got that armor on that stand H. Yep. Dude. Actually, that's your favorite weapon, right? On <laughs> stand H? Yeah, with Hulk. No. Just like, Nothing about that is my favorite, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing with what you're trying to make an association with is my favorite, okay? <laughs> Uh, I'm yeah. done with that game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh. Oh, it's a, oh. It's been Arika this whole time, Arika. I guess. Uh, okay. Like the company that made Street Fighter EX. Arika. 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 Sorry, my fault for that. I no, no, no. I mean, I think yeah. it was listed that way yeah. for a little bit. So. All right. So here we go, 801 Strider going against uh, Arika. Yep. 801 Strider, of course, going with Abel. Arika going with C Viper. Arika. Classic vanilla match yes. here. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm just, that's <laughs> like Sakura <laughs> strategies yeah. right there. Wake up, stand fierce. Jeez. I mean, it might well, have been thinking it was a burn kick or something like that. Maybe. But we, we did see Futile's wake up, stand fierce beat Filipino man at SCR. Oh, <laughs> Wake okay. up, stand fierce. Into red focus. That's what he did. 
Oh, oh wow. Oh, here he goes. FABC going to go into the ultra. Yeah, love when Abel hits him with the shell toes like that. Oh, actually, no. Is oh, it is enough. Right. Okay, yeah, I didn't yeah, think yeah, I, yeah, we were just like holding yeah, our breath like, uh, You know I what they should have did with this costume of Abel? What's they should have just removed all of his voice. Like, he shouldn't have grunted or anything. He should have just... That would have been hilarious. That would have been awesome. Oh, James. You're <laughs> Yeah, he definitely <laughs> should not make any noise. It's <laughs> just silent. <laughs> like when he dies, he should just fall back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that actually Mines kinda... his way off screen. <laughs> That'd be sick. That actually, actually would have been cool. <laughs> Patch it. Patch it, Patch Capcom. It. <laughs> All right, Sorry. but Erica getting a, uh, Arika getting a really good sequence. Mm -hmm. And now here comes Ada One Strider. Wow, let's just do it. He's going yeah. with that Viper tendency to never block on oh, Wake Up. That's right. Really is. Street Fighter 4 had it. <laughs> Don't need to block on Wake Up. Oh, ever. no! That was... Oh, he just yeah. didn't... Oh, he just no. didn't have the meter for yeah. that FADC. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. Double Fear Thunder, Thunder Knuckle. Oh, wow. Got right behind him. Nice. Wow, going straight into Red Focus. Very close to Dizzy right now. Oh, he gets, be, yeah, yeah. gets him out of the corner. He should be in good shape. Yeah, nope, is. he is not in good shape. I apologize. Not quite dead yet. And Abel, there it was. That's their first, just like I said, to yes. beat that burn yeah. kick. That's Pretty why good. he did it. Now, the question is, look at, look at Strider's face. Look at the intensity right now. Oh my he God. is He's like so into it. Yeah. Oh my goodness, his eyes are so Stand wide. Stand strong into super. Yep. Oh, he's playing so well. Oh, oh. oh look at this. He's playing out of his mind. It went Strider, oh. ladies and gentlemen. Is that enough? That is enough. enough! Oh That's my enough. god! 801 Strider, 801 ladies Strider. and gentlemen! 801 oh, Strider! Strider. <laughs> he is feeling himself right Strider. now! Oh Ooh. my god! <laughs> <laughs> and that's the best right there. In those situations, yes. when you're watching at home, you put yourself in the shoes of Erica or Arika, yeah, yeah. and you just like, why do I keep calling Erica? Arika, <laughs> yeah. and you just think to yourself, what would I do in this? Of How course. would I counter it? And yeah. then if you're wrong, yes. then you're like, I would have got bodied too. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ooh. All right, but obviously... Arika showing that he's very, very capable of taking this match. Yeah. That one was definitely stolen right. by 801 Strider. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Arika can't really feel bad about how that <laughs> went. You know what I, I mean? Think, I think, I don't even think he stole it. I think he earned it. I think this guy dropped the ball. <laughs> yeah, he just, he just picked up the pass. Yeah, that one fierce thunder knuckle that whipped was the kind of the spell, to, the key to his doom yep. at that point. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, Strider definitely deserved that win. He earned it. Oh, nice. Ooh, right under step yeah, kick. Yeah, that's pretty sick. I don't think I've seen it like in that Let's situation. See, here comes Arika. Oh, wow. Oh, he recognized it was the counter hit. He is so good at that. Every time he step kicks, that he's looking so for the good. counter hit. No meter spent. Didn't need to do any. Co yeah, just step in straight for the launch. Or crouch here. Nice. And again. Well done from Strider right there. Wow, and see how key that was that he did that step kick in the crouch fierce because he recognized the counter hit, mm -hmm. sitting on almost a full meter right, right now. Yeah. So he won the round without having to spend any meter. That's why that's so beautiful. Yes. Oh, here he comes again. Keeps him in the corner with that combo. Ooh. Oh, nice. Wow, just goes in with the wheel kick. Oh. Oh! Everything is going 801 Strider. Good block. Oh. oh, he tried to punish it. He tried to hit it with that stand fierce. Didn't quite work. Here comes Arika. He's got the corner position. Very easy to combo into burn kick in this place. Oh, <laughs> he went for the hero throw. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh! Ooh, that was so sick. Oh, nice, and then right to the one. hands of 801 Strider. That's well one done, of those, That's one of those momentum-killing, diffusing yep. moves right there. Yep. Ooh. Strider doing what he does best, giving the fans a wink and a smile. It's what they want to see when they tune in. That's right. 801 Strider is going to move on. Yep. Look at this crowd of just ridiculous talent. Yep.
This is it's like a who's who of fighters out there. <laughs> yeah. This is really good. Okay. But it go. looks like we're gonna have a Kid Sendu DJ coming back up, and guess who he's going up against? Justin Wall. But now what's interesting is that they are either on the same side of the brackets or um or one of them beat Cast Blanca. Hmm. Let's see oh, if you I have can. the bracket right there, right? Yeah, okay. which pool is this? This is H2. So once yeah, again, while you pull that up, um, I think this, you know, Justin's most likely going to go straight to Elena and uh, DJ versus Elena. Okay, so oh. Kita Senja DJ was on the same side of the bracket as Cas Blanca. So he beat him. So he must have defeated Cas Blanca. Possibly, we don't we don't know for sure. Right. Well, I'm assuming this has got to be winners finals at this, this point. This is, but we don't know. Cas Blanca might have lost his first round. You know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Know. okay, yeah. you're right, right. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> but Justin Wong, oh. ladies and gentlemen, is now about to play. Yeah, but if you guys want to follow along at home, you guys can go to challenge.com/slash users. <laughs> slash Canada Cup, okay, and you can follow along a lot of the brackets over there. We are currently running the H pools, so H1, H2, H3, and H4. All right, so Justin is going to go with Elena. Mm -hmm. Wow, did he just win? Yeah, just a standing. Justin <laughs> <laughs> Wolf. I, I don't know. Um, that just might have even been an errant, like, uh, uh, max out. Yeah. Hmm. Oh wow! Yeah, that's what he was trying to slide. But that just—he's Justin just sent a message to Kitasenju that I am ready for your yes. max outs. I'm Correct. gonna slide. Oh, and so he oh fakes it goodness. with the focus. Oh my goodness! The mind games. Yes, just walk. Okay. Nice. He's in there. Interesting. EX max out is kind of a push out, you yeah. know? Pushes yourself out of the range that DJ that Kita Senja wants to be in. Mm -hmm. Just like that. It's like a reverse combo. You take damage yeah. and then she gains a little life. Yeah. Whatever happens is the life lead changes in her favor. I forgot who was saying it, but I just wish the one thing they did to Elena was make her healing her super. Yeah, 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 so she can't yep. keep absorbing it. I don't know. I think it kind of makes her interesting. I like it, because otherwise you would almost never see the healing happen. So That's good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jay. <James. laughs> I just went I'll with you. I just went with you. No, 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 beating up her opponent rather than getting beat up. <laughs> you know. Uh, good punish from Justin. Kitesinju <laughs> DJ. He's having a really hard time yeah. getting in now. Here comes Justin. Gonna get some extra damage on that. Spend a little bit of meter. It's always interesting because one of the things that, that I, I kind of like about the way Elena plays though is that her meter is really interestingly used. Like, mm -hmm. there's you really have to think about: Do you want to use it? Save it for the ex mount smash. Save it for anti-air uppercuts. Get a little extra damage at the end of combos. Yeah. FADC, you know, links tails to get extra damage. Yeah. I really like the meter management aspect of Elena. Yes. Okay. Let's see if there's any adaptation here from Kita Senju. As we said, this is Justin return to his return, original style. Yep, yeah. return to 2002 Justin Wong. That's what I like to see. When everybody's bored, <laughs> everybody's falling asleep. This is you guys created this, by the way. Mm-hmm. I mean, see, there you go. Yep. Important use of that meter. Yep. But now here we go. Kita Senju's got him in the corner. So this is Kita Senju's opportunity. Justin. Nice. Oh. My goodness. I mean, was that just to catch the back dash? That was, yeah. Oh, my God. Justin Wong showing that he has some tech. And now Kita Senju DJ went for the cross-up mix-up because it wasn't the optimal strategy because yeah. it would have been better to keep her in the corner. But Justin sniffed it out, and he's out of the corner mm -hmm. now. Not in, in, out of harm's way. What the now heck was what that? Was, what is going on? My goodness. Ooh, too far. Here we go. Oh, but no punish. <laughs> okay, good, sloop, good slide there from Kita Senju. 
Okay. Nice. And Justin has blocked the correct direction so often against Kitasenju in that little mix-up. Yeah. So it's oh. a timer scam and a That's heal. That's so annoying to deal with. Wow. Oh. Nothing brings out the saw. Oh, 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 here we go. Oh, no. Not enough time. Not enough time. Justin Wong. <laughs> Back to his old ways. Nothing. Oh, no. Nothing brings out the salt like a lame Justin. <laughs> Nothing brings out the salt like Elena healing. Mm -hmm. And so when you combine lame Justin with Elena healing, man. So bad. <laughs> it's like everything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, this is America's worst nightmare. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is. Let's see if it's going to transfer to the world's worst nightmare. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, want, I do actually want to see him time out again. I want to see him put everyone to sleep. Well, you remember even at Evo, fan favorite gamer B started getting booed for his Elena play. <laughs> Dude, it's it's the way the character was designed, yeah. man. It's just too good <laughs> and too boring. That was really interesting because I mean, early on, a lot of people were saying that Elena was really bad. Well, they also said that about Hugo. Yeah, um, fair enough. They should have asked me what I thought. James Chen. Justin Wong, ladies and gentlemen, with an exciting victory over Kitasenju DJ. Wow. Full of action? Yes. <laughs> Justin Wong. Oh, man. But yeah, I mean, look, it that really, was did, finals, it really <laughs> did take Justin heading back to New York for just a brief period of time That's all to he needed. reinvigorate oh, his man. original style. He went yeah. to defend the North in New York. And it just all came rushing back to him. He's like, wait a minute. Yeah. I'm lame. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wait, I don't have to play aggressive. I got to play to win. I know? can annoy people by sitting here and doing nothing. Exactly. And so. it all came rushing back. And now look here. And it now comes. it's going to be over for everybody. This is what you guys wanted. You guys <laughs> asked for this. And now you're going to have to suffer I mean, the consequences. In all seriousness, though, mm -hmm. I'm actually super happy to see Justin play this way because oh, yeah. he's in Capcom Cup now. Yeah. He's pretty much secure points-wise, right? He, yeah, and, no. and honestly, if he was playing Rufus still, he went 0-2 last year. If he was still maining Rufus, I would honestly predict him going 0-2 again. Uh, if he was still maining Rufus, he wouldn't be in Capcom Cup. <laughs> <laughs> There's that too, you know? And so, obviously, for U.S. Pride, because right now Capcom Cup is just chock full of yeah. the Asian and Southeast Asia yeah. players and stuff yep. like that. So in the interest of having U.S. players do well, because we did the worst last year at yes. Capcom Cup, Yeah, yeah. I'm glad to see Justin oh, yeah. going with this Elena and the Rose st style because I think this honestly is his best chance yep. at performing well at that event. Yep. Um, yeah. It's good to see that the monster is back. <laughs> and now it looks like we're going to get Itabashi Zengi mm -hmm. versus Poem. We saw a poem earlier with awesome play, upset over air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Played super that was, well. Yeah. I like that dynamic in the background there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Booker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Itazan, Itabashi Zangi yep. is in pool H3. Mm -hmm. That pool also had Air, who we saw Poem defeat earlier. Yep. Shine is also in that pool. You know what I like? Yeah, I like that Poem's name wasn't listed here. Yeah, uh, Poem. Notable players. That's pretty good. What's I like it when that happens, and, and then he just blows everybody up. Interestingly enough, he's actually on the same side of the pool as both Shine and Air, which means he defeated both of them. If this, wow. is, I mean, this is still winners, I'm assuming. Yeah, winners, this is winners finals. finals. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he defeated both of them. Man, and that's uh, crazy because, yeah. you know, you wouldn't want to have to play against Shine when you guys play each other like you're from the same area. So sucks to have to travel and deal with that. But it is what it is. Yep. It's the life of the tournament. But yeah, this is to get into semifinals. Mm -hmm. And we okay. saw, as we said, Pipo and play very well earlier yeah. with the Capre. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Itazan, though, of course, as we mentioned earlier, one of the three greatest Zangief players on the planet. Ah, yes. 
Okay, do it. Like a button play. check. Yeah. Right. Is Poem really going to counter pick him with Sagat? I think he, he is. Or is he going to? Is this just kind of like a, a, a show? You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm like, you know? I, no, I think he's going to do it. I think whenever, he just might do it. Whenever people ask to do button checks, I never pick my character. Oh, of course. I always pick like some random character. I was. Yeah. See, there we go. Yeah. The Capri. Okay. Right. Just trying to put a little fear into Itazan. Now, is this one of the Capri's bad matchups, though? I don't think so. I don't think she has any bad matchups, James Chen. <laughs> I think she's SS tier. Stream? Well, look. Infiltration has been doing very well with this character. Never mind. No, go ahead. And uh, Knuckle Dew also doing very well with this character. A yep. lot of DiCaprio players are doing very uh, well. Actually, all DiCaprio players do very well. <laughs> Chase Yates what, does the, well. What's the point you're trying to make here, Mike? Um, I think that character is overpowered. Ooh, too far. And easily top five in the game. Along with Elena. Rolento. Elena is interesting because I feel like Elena is one of those characters that has some bad matchups, but she counters all the important characters. <laughs> What's her bad matchups? Oh my gosh. Well, first of all, I'm still just. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, James. Yeah. Oh, did he get wow. it? Wow. He was mashing Ultra in between poems. Attacks. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes you gotta do that. Like I said, it gets you in a top eight Evo. And here comes Inazan, and yep, just like that. Back. Look at him, he's so happy. I love watching him play. This is the most animated guy. Look at yeah. <laughs> One he of the smiles. things that I, I, I do love he's about He's smiling now. Look at him, he's already smiling. You know, it's funny because a lot of the Japanese players, for the longest of time, when they would come to the events, they would be very serious. Yeah. They didn't show a lot of emotion and right. stuff like that. I feel like that's drastically changed. We it have has. guys like Storm Kubo. Yeah. We have it is on. I mean, we even have um. Oh gosh, the, the name is slipping me. Oh, Koji Kog. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. I'm telling you, they actually love. You know. Oh wow. Ooh, gets out of there. Nice. Can jump back and charge and still punish. The poem. Okay, looking good here this round. But remember, one missed combo and that was the end of him. It's true. But it is on. Did have his ultra to make that comeback yeah. last time. Mm. Kid is not trying to get that headbutt. Ooh, nice. Mm, oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. That was. Oh, oh we yeah. missed the throw. This is a problem. Yes. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Problem okay, solved. Okay. Yeah, problem solved. okay, okay, okay. That's a sigh of relief for Poem there. Yep. He's like, no, not again. Yeah. Not again. Oh, man. <laughs> not again. Oh! Nice. Okay. Okay, red focus. Yep. It's taken to the corner now. Wow. It's out, out of there. Yeah. <laughs> That's another one of the one of the strengths that the Capri has yep. for sure. For sure. I mean it's kinda like how uh you know, Ryu and all those other characters used to have the escape hurricane kick, right? Yeah. And now she she's pretty much the one that has it. Ooh. I thought I'm still in this though. Okay. And this will be Oh that will be okay. bad. Yep. Wow. Didn't believe he was gonna go for the wake up psycho stink. Oh he had to. Oh, nice jump back. Ooh, I like the aggressiveness of a poem though. Just trying to get in there. Oh man, Itabashi. Oh, Ooh, got him low. What, wow. a regular throw? That was definitely. It had to be a mistake. Yeah, maybe? some sort of execute. Oh, that's oh. punishable. That's so is that. Why what poem? Did he? Why? Yeah, look at Itabashi looking over at his, at his boys, making sure they're still <laughs> supporting him. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Yeah, Itabashi knows he kind of got away with that one. Right. I see what Poem's going to do. I mean, I think he was doing fine with DiCaprio. I don't really see a need for him to switch characters here. Um, no, 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 yeah. not at all. I mean, he pretty much had that last round. He was right in there. It's just that he went for two Psycho yeah. Stings in a row. After he missed the first one and he didn't get punished, that should have just been, let's run away and set up my footsie game again. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, he didn't realize that he had charge at that situation. Yeah. He thought he was just doing low first running around. And see, again, charge. He's really masking his yeah, charge all those very attacks. well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. See how after he does crouch first, he stays crouching for just yep. a little bit. Just he's to make sure holding, he's still yeah, charged. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> too early, I think. Yep. Yeah. It was definitely too early, but it looked perfect to me. <laughs> Oh, here comes Itazan. Oh, nice jab. Yeah. Get her We're out not here. getting out of here. Yep, I like that. Oh. Nice. That dive kick was at the perfect oh, angle, but ah, Itazan, yeah, just finishes yeah. it off with the chip damage. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh. Oh, Pray for the red focus. Yeah, brings it to the corner right at the start of the round. Discouragement start. Less, yeah, and then you get this mix yep. up right afterwards. Oh, nice. We didn't I get mean, to finish that though. Obviously, not a lot of characters put the word vortex in association with Zangief. But right. He it actually exists. has one of the best vortex. Yes, in he the does. Game. Yeah. Well, he used to. You know, way back in the day, Vanilla. <laughs> yeah, he used to have a great vortex on that green hand. Whatever. Yeah, but right now it's it's just. That short jump that he has mm -hmm. makes it so hard to know which side he's going to land on. Yeah, that's true. He's kind of like DJ in that he has the ability to cross up and oh, whoa. Oh. You know what I didn't like? His poem started out so offensive in the first game. Uh -huh. the first round, it was doing really well for him. And then he just went on the straight on the defense, and it has not worked out at all. I want to see him walk up SPD. Oh, he has been ready for that. And no you know need, what? Yeah. You know what the beautiful thing about that sequence that he did was? What's that? Is that both times, even if that wasn't gonna chip kill him, after he jabbed him out of the air, he went for meaty splash. Yeah. Because that swaps the side back again. Yeah. So even though he jabs her out of that side, he splashes, puts her right back in the corner. Yeah. So he did that both times, and that's really, really smart. All right. Good adjustment by it. Or well, good. Uh, Good adaptation by Itazan. You know, yeah. it might not even have been something that he was, that he has like experience with, but on the spot, if you have that knowledge with your character and yeah. such, you know, you can just be like, okay, a jab him out of the air, let me cross him up now so I can get back. Yeah, no, he uh, he played it right. He definitely did a good work all around in that matchup. Um, so perhaps, you know, Zangief does do fairly well against the Capre. It's, <laughs> it's debatable right now. We okay. need more evidence. Okay, okay. Kay? We need more data. Right, right. We don't have enough yet. Um, but I think, I don't know, are we going into another match right now? Uh, looks like we have someone, looks like we have Air coming up on the stream. Looks like we might have a loser's finals match okay. between Air and Poem. Okay. So again, that was the bracket with Shine as well. Yeah. And so it looks like Shine has been eliminated out of the tournament. Okay. This is loser's, loser's finals match. All right. Finishing off Pool H here. Yeah. H3. Let me see if they've updated some of the other H pools so that we can give you some word on who has qualified and who has not. Cool. Obviously, it's actually, I mean, a lot of people don't realize it's really hard to update these brackets while you're at the venue and such. Yeah, no. <laughs> a lot of times, um, the internet goes out on you, or it's just really hard to update. Yeah, I don't, I don't have the full results from these brackets, unfortunately. Okay. No biggie. Well, let's see if Eric can get a chance at redemption here, or if Poem is going to scrape by with DiCaprio again. Oh, button checks. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Yeah, they're trying to figure out something. Okay. 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 No problem. No problem. <laughs> Aaron, good spirits. Now this is to qualify to semis by losers bracket. That's not necessary. Nice, got right under there. Yeah, so last time these gentlemen ran into each other, Poem just demolished mm -hmm, Air. Mm -hmm. um, 
Air was not happy. Poem wasn't even happy because it was just it was so bad. <laughs> well, there was uh, there was a couple of oh ow oh nice max damage combo there from Air. But here comes Poem. Yeah, that was definitely something I, I don't think a lot of people were expecting when Poem right took out Air like that. Yeah, no, it was yeah he did a really good job and he oh. was doing well against Itabashi, but See, I. Again, he fell apart during that match. When you're when you lose a match, you think about it a lot. Yes. And I think Air thought about it a lot. What yes. I could have done differently. Yes. And right now, the adjustment that I see that Air is making, he's been going for a lot of frame traps. Okay. He has gotten uh, pretty good damage off of that already, and that's how he won the first round off of two really strong combos. And also, I know it's still got to be tough for Poem because he just got off of a loss. Mm -hmm. You know, he still hasn't had time to process that, and now he's already in his next match. So, I like it. He was, Air was going for a lot of frame traps, right? Mm -hmm. So then he finally went with the throw there, and yeah. he got the throw, so he established that. Again, very important to... Mm -hmm. Well, oh, he, I like, yeah, Air just went in. Nice tattoo. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That a, I'm trying to figure out what that a tattoo. What's that a tattoo of? Doesn't matter. <laughs> it's a tattoo. I like tattoos. Did I say something wrong, Jay? Nothing. Nothing, Mike. Nothing. I'm, I'm not, just speaking I'm my not mind. I'm staring at you and smiling at you right now. <laughs> All right. So now, po wow. Maybe Ooh, thinking of going, going back, back to, the, to the class. I mean, he had such success. With the Capri, the first time they played with each other. Yeah. So I don't see why he would switch. Okay, so he did go back to the Capri. All right. Thank you, James. <laughs> <laughs> Man, whatever's going on over there, those people are booing nonstop. Oh, yeah. my <laughs> Anyways. So oh, Air wow. made, yeah, Air made some key adjustments. Too many risks right now from Poem. Okay, gets the throws. Yeah. He's gotten Poem scared to touch buttons now because yep. of those couple of frame yep. traps. Like I said, I don't think Poem has truly um, gotten Look. over that Itabashi match. Yeah. He's still thinking about it. <laughs> oh, nice. Now he's starting to play. Oh no. Capra, yeah. You always got to be careful of that ground pound. It's, it is punishable. It's a nice 50-50, but very punishable. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh, wow. That but jump back EX drill catches so many people off guard. Wow, right. that barely hit. Okay. It's going to go ultra. Is, yes, it's going to do enough. Yep, there we go. All right, and air now in the run back, just like we saw when Filipino champ defeated Pro Fluke earlier. Yeah, that's right. Pro Fluke <laughs> yeah. won the run back. Yeah, that's right. Now is Air going to win the run back in losers? You know what? That's the second time we've not seen that punish. Maybe it's just one of those yeah. weird block stun moves. Probably. Okay, so oh, right now, distancing yeah. on that dive kick. It is poem gets started really strong, and then out of nowhere, it just tends to go away, like it's happening right now. Uh oh, wait. Mm. Oh. Oh, oh, nice, nice. Okay, okay. Ooh. <laughs> All right, now Poem this is going is, yeah, ham. This is what he did the first game. Yep, he's going ham. That's what he has to do. Oh, you I'm have to keep going. Don't ever stop, just keep going. So what? Take more life. Ooh, did you see him whip the that jab in between there and still that blocking good. time? Yep. But it's one of my favorite tactics, though, when someone tries to jump over you. And instead of trying to hit him with like a low forward or low short when they land, you just jab him out of the air instead. Mm. You know, I always like that because then you don't have to deal with that land and uppercut mix up or whatever like that. All right, so Pi Poem looking good that last round, but here comes Air coming yeah. back. He actually got the combo off the overhead, but didn't convert it firmly, convert it fully. Yeah. Well, oh, no, yeah. You can't do anything against DiCaprio like that. She is going to hit you with that uppercut. Down up charge doesn't Ooh. get switched up when you cross under. Yeah. Here he comes, Pipe Home, oh, trying yeah. to make the comeback. That's right. Oh, yeah, he's on the. Oh, oh wow. Air what a grab. That out. Wow. What a grab. Home has to be furious right now. Ooh. 
There it is. Air is going to advance on from pool H3. Yes. The loser side. Yes. Winner's side, of course, was Itazan. Uh, like I said, I don't have the results from all the other brackets, unfortunately. So uh, we'll definitely update you as soon as we can with Absol that information. Absolutely. So. And it looks like we're going to get one more match in here okay. right now okay. before we take a small break. And it's going to be Snake Eyes versus Gonzalez. Oh, wow. Winner's finals. Okay, okay. I was about to say, is this a loser's uh, yeah, match? Yeah, winner's or? finals of Pool H1. So, so Pool Seth H1. versus Keith. What Pool do you guys H1. think about this? Well, that's, uh, a, that's a rough one. That's a rough that's one. That's definitely going to be a rough match. So that ma that pool also had Lil Evil in it. Joe Shine was there. Mm -hmm. Mr. Trite that we saw earlier was yep. on there. Uh, but it looks like, yeah, Snake Eyes and Gonzalez, yeah. Okay. Making it all the way out to winners, finals. I mean, Seth was ba a really bad matchup for What's Zangief. That? Seth was a bad matchup for Zangief. Long time ago in vanilla with that neutral jumping fierce. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was like a 10 0 match. Uh, they took that away. This match has been much more fair since then. But I still feel like maybe Seth has a slight advantage. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> so you think it's more of a definitive yeah, advantage? Yeah, he okay, definitely okay. has an advantage. Okay. Destination. There we go. Ooh, man, that Geef costume. Can we look at this and appreciate it? Oh. Now, the thing is, I, 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 Snake Eyes, I don't know how often he plays with online Tony, but he, he plays quite a bit with him, right? Uh, I don't know currently. Okay. okay. Oh, wow. I would imagine at one point in time, they played <laughs> a ton, though. I'll say that. I don't know if it's current, though. Gonzalez got him back out now, trying to play this keep away game. Yep. But you okay. see, I like how Snake Eyes, at one point, he was kind of in that uncomfortable, oh no, this is bad, wow, wow. just like that, three yeah. hits. But, so, there was that one point in time where Snake Eyes was in a bad range, mm -hmm. right? So instead of trying to walk forward into the good range, he actually walked backwards and got out of the bad range and then tried to get back in. Nice. And sometimes that's actually really key. Yeah. See, he did it again. He yep. walks. He walks backwards to the range where he's outside of yeah. Stan Fierce. You have to do that. So That's he can get the double jump in there. Yeah. This and block some more. Yep. He has to block it. Block yeah. it. See, he doesn't really have much room to walk back. Okay. Now, now he does. Yeah. Now yeah. he's outside that range. But when he's in the corner, obviously he can't do that. Yeah. That's why Gonzalez wants to keep him at that yep. corner. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, that was so good. Dash up grab. Ooh, Trying snake. to catch quick rise. There it is. Oh. I'll, yo, Gonzalez is amazing and not throwing out Fierce Punch from that distance. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. I love that anti-air. Yeah. He's at that range, uppercut with a whiff. He uppercutted. All right. He uppercutted. I we just had the stand strong anti-air. Oh, oh my! No, where's the red oh, focus? Oh no! Where's the red focus? I think Snake Eyes might have just thought that was gonna kill. He might have just thought he was gonna kill. Oh my gosh! That was so unfortunate. <laughs> oh no! Oh out! Yeah, yep, just like that. Him. All right now. Oh, oh headbutt! Oh, oh my! Two hits! God. Oh, and he goes red for red focus. focus. Okay, I thought he was going to go for, like, focus in the super. Oh, my. What? Snake Eyes was like, whoops, my bad. Let me get a perfect yeah, this next exactly. round. Yeah, Snake Eyes. Wow. <laughs> Best geef. <laughs> Best geef. Woo. Whoops. Okay, well, that, that was an unfortunate situation yeah. for Gonzalez. Yeah. Again, Gonzalez, another one of the players all the way out from Japan. Mm -hmm. One of the strongest sets out there, along with Tasho. Yep. Oh, it missed. And here we go. Vortex time. Short jump. Yep, stayed in the Ooh. front. Mm -hmm. Oh. Chasing him down. 
but Seth has a fast oh, wow. jump, so he wasn't going to be able to green hand under him and get that lariat like a lot of times. Yeah. Oh! Wow, he's getting in some amazing that jump was a ins. Fierce green hand down? Oh, okay, I, I didn't even. Okay, never mind, never mind. What do you think? You think he's, he did it? It looked like a fierce green oh, hand. Wow. I didn't think that comboed, but oh well. Okay. What is going on? Gonzalez here keeping moderate. Oh, Ooh, wow, no. that was so far. <laughs> I'm going to say moderate pressure yeah. against Zangief. And that was unfortunate. He had he had the punish on the spinning on the it, with the green hand, right. but he just didn't get anything off of it. He did one too many jabs. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Some more damage. Push Snake eyes to the corner, but Snake is still in good, not too bad of shape, I'll say. Although as he gets closer to that. Oh wow! Right, no, he goes. Oh, oh, oh no! What was that? Should have been stand short, ex green yeah. hand, focus, but. Take okay. what you can get. It's Gonzalez. Oh, there goes walking right out of that yeah. fierce punch range again. Gonzalez trying so hard right now. Oh! Oh, he could have got him. Okay, here comes Gonzalez. Oh, but he didn't finish it. And he oh, went for the wow. tandem engine. No. Jump fierce. Oh. Snake Eyes has gotten a lot of mileage out of that specific move in this tournament so far. So good stuff to him. And he makes it out in winners' finals. Yep. Gonzalez now will get sent to the losers bracket where he will have to battle somebody to get out. Not sure who exactly that player is just yet. All right, so I think that's going to conclude the H pools yes. right now. So again, we saw Snake Eyes come out on winner's side. We definitely uh, saw Itazan come out on winner's side. Yeah. CCG Air came out on loser's side. Um, we'll catch you up on some of the brackets after so, we take yeah. a quick break. Justin Wong. Uh, so now we have an American that made it out, actually. Okay, okay. Outside, uh, so, geez, so Momochi, I believe. Oh, that's right. Justin beat Kita Senju, right? Yes. Okay, so yeah, he made yeah. it on winner's side as well. And Strider, okay. right? Oh, yeah, and 801 Strider. Okay, okay, cool. So Justin and Strider and Snake Eyes. Wow. Yeah, there you go. And Itabashi, so awesome. Yep. All, all people probably expected to make it out of their pools anyways. All foreign players. Say what? All foreign players, technically. Welcome back, everybody, to Canada Cup. We've had some awesome matches, and we just finished the H pools. We're moving on to the I pools now. I'm James Chen. Hey, I'm Ultra David, and also pretty cold. Pretty cold. <laughs> so I'm just going to be in this okay, thing Okay, no worries. No um, worries. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's too run. It's a little, little chilly. Yeah, it's a little chilly. A little more than I'm so. used to. Yeah. So anyway, we're going to hop into the next series of pools. Mm -hmm. I pools. There's the match. Alex Valle from Southern California on the left. On the right, Ian from Canada. Yep. I, I still love it because I saw Alex Valle tweet basically. He's like, should I go to Canada Cup and gatekeep people? <laughs> That's all he's here for. But it's awesome to see him heading out here, showing up, supporting Lapchi, supporting Canada Cup. And he is going to continue going with Hugo. We saw him defeat Bonchan at EVO with this character. Alex's Hugo is very strong. Yeah, he has, he has a, you know, he, always he has really good sense of pace and timing and when to do stuff where to do it all this it's, it's not it's not so much uh uh you know scientific about it but he's he just sort of gets it right that's and it's, him it's really interesting too because hugo is is like very even though it's a lot of it is just claps he's a very footsie heavy character oh yeah, and that super. works very well for Vi. but each, right each one now of, each one of those claps is a fireball that's that's why he works with hugo mm. because he's throwing fireballs and that's his game Wow. Well, Ian with a good start takes that first round. Yeah, I really liked it. Wow, neutral jump, huh? Yeah, Alex <laughs> saw it. So much time on counter hit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, here. Oh, wow, my. really? After that first round where Ian was putting up a fight, contesting, and got damage, all that sort of stuff, Alex comes in. Yeah, just, uh, I'm not, he, Vi just started hitting a lot more buttons, less claps, and it just worked out. And right there, you saw him, he tried to go for Meat Squasher, thinking that all those buttons convinced Ian to stop touching buttons, but didn't happen. Ah, uh, the knife. You don't see the knife too often. That's a good tool, though. It kind of oh, gives yeah. him the same range, a better range to fight Hugo with, and does chip on all the normals. Ooh, look yeah, at that. I, I really like the knife in this matchup. I don't know about Cody players, but that makes a lot of sense to me. Okay, save the ultra to chase him. 
Ooh. Oh, Alex coming in still. He was oh, waiting wait for the reverse. Yeah, he's waiting for the jump. He's waiting for the jump because he wants the ultra to him. Oh. All, all he needs to do is not jump. Just not jump. Yeah, there it is. Mm, there it smart is. stuff. Whatever he was going to get punished with on the ground would not have been as damaging as with the jump. Hugo has that damage, but that's not really Alex's style. Yeah, he's cold. He's cold. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> We're all wimps from SoCal. <laughs> well, I guess some NorCal too. There's some NorCal wimps. Ooh, okay. And now here comes Vi back to this strong pressure. He's not even going to go for that. So in that setup there, if Hugo does neutral, if he, if he does jump fierce, not a cross up. If he does jump splash, cross up. Ah, okay, okay. Because we saw Storm Kubo do that setup yep. as well. Common and Hugo setup. All right, picks up the knife again, just like you said. Really good tool. Yeah, knife strong seems really good in this. And he picks it right back up. Oh, wow. That was such a far range sweep. Again, Alex leaving plenty of holes for Ian to jump around. Yeah. Yes, or, or do that. Ooh, gets out of there. Yeah, Ian's done a really good job with this keep out game. Once Vi has managed to get in, it's been a problem. But I so like far, Ian has kept him out a lot more often than Vi has been able to get in. Right. And as long as you play your odds that way, it'll work out in your favor. First time that we've seen them on this side. <laughs> Different sides. <laughs> That's true. I like the zoning, you know, Ian has a good mid-range game. I love the rock timings he's using. Up close, he's he hasn't fallen apart. So I, I really like what he's doing Yeah, Cody. so far he hasn't gotten counter hit by, oh, here we go. Ultra, Save it, yeah. oh, he, he used it, okay, okay. Because Ian's not jumping. Oh, so you're right. So I think this is the right time to do it. That's and it, it's really interesting because Vi was going for low short clap. He was trying to get the counter hit and it wasn't happening, but he was connecting the low short. Oh, finally gets it there. But what he had done before was, so he noticed that he was getting hit by the low short, but not counter hit. So that's why he finally walked up and just did low short lariat. And that was the combo. Yes. And that got him the hard knockdown that he was looking for. Okay, well, let's see if they make any adjustments. I think it was Alex who was the one who was delaying there. Mm -hmm. And Alex, honestly, is the one that I feel like needs to make the most adjustments because I think Ian's been playing very solidly. His game plan has been working. Yes. It has really been on by to try to break through the plan. Okay. Ian, just like that, is back to the neutral game. Wow, that was a sick block. Yeah, again, so... If they've basically been alternating who's winning, and that's okay for Ian, because, you know, if you alternate and win the first round, you're going to win the yeah. whole thing. So. Yeah. Oh, he held onto the rock. Nice. It's going to be real tough for Alex to avoid anything here. Oh! oh okay, he's in. It's possible. Oh, yeah, he's going he to jump back. He tried to get the uh, tornado. I agree. Tried to bait out the EX tornado. I think that's probably what it was. But again, great patience from Ian, showing that he's not just going to go for the, the obvious answer. So if the pattern continues, Vi should just win this round. But Ian just wants to break the pattern now because he's looking so good. Uh -oh. Hey, Alex got something. There you go. From the front. Ooh. Alex is leaving a lot of time, I think, for Ian to, to do something crazy. And it does come, not crazy, but, you know, there are reversals occasionally. Right. I feel like Alex could benefit from going for Pile Driver more. Just he feels like he's leaving a lot of empty space. Oh, that was really, that was Ooh. sick tech, too. Yeah, I know. Because again, you just don't see anyone ever cancel normals into FADCs. Yeah. Very strong rock zone. Oh, I love the roundhouse. Perfectly placed. Alex needs something big. Oh, that was the counter hit. Clap. He can't get hit again. There it is. Ian's Ian. going to take it. Great job to Ian. Great. I love the way he played that Yeah, he was, he was good. He was good. He really looked good. And the gatekeeper just got gate kept. Got gate keeped it. <laughs> Got gate keeped? So we're in pool's eye. 
Pool I1, Yomi Dominion, and Jace the Ace. Some okay. notable names. Pool R2 has Misei and Brent is cool. Mm -hmm. Pool I3, PR Balrog, and MOV. Pool I4, Ryan Hart, Alex Valle, and Hagejin. Nice. So okay. this is okay. another I4 match we just saw. So here. this is the last set of pools, right? It is the last set okay. of pools. Okay, okay. Yes. So Ryan Hart coming up to the stream now. He's been playing very solidly. We mentioned yesterday during the team tournament, it felt like he's kind of back to his old form. Whenever you see Ryan Hart going for those strong read uppercuts, that feels like it's back to the Ryan Hart that we knew from 2014, who was playing so well, who played so well all year long. Yeah, yeah he did. Placed very high at the Capcom Cup last year as well. He's a strong player, there's no doubt about that. His opponent is Rust Proof Robot. Also from well from Canada. After that we'll have R Kappa Mise from Japan and DDJ Poison XXL from Canada. <laughs> nice. Well, we just had one surprise there with Ian taking out Alex Vae. You know, not a lot of people know who Ian is, but Obviously, very strong player. Let's see yeah, if good. Rust Proof Robot can continue that trend. So I believe Reinhardt just went with Evil Ryu. Oh, yes, yeah, there yes, it is. he did. Evil Ryu for Reinhardt. Did Rust Proof Robot pick his character first, and then he responded this way, or I wonder if he's just going with Evil Ryu in general? Because it could be one of those situations where sometimes. Players will go with characters they want to learn earlier in pools, you know. Well, that does happen sometimes, but I'm not sure if that's something Ryan does. He's just so practiced, that, and I have to think he has a lot of Evil Ryu ex uh, experience. Yeah. I haven't seen him play the character too often, but like he plays all the Shotos, so it seems like a perfect well, fit. Yeah, he's used a lot of different characters. I even remember in Super, there was a tournament where he had to fight Daigo. He busted Kami out all of a sudden and took out Daigo. Yeah, we've seen even Abel from him. Uh, he, de he definitely gets around in characters. He looks good. He chased Rustproof Robot all the way around. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, that was, oh yeah, that was punished right there. Yeah, but Ryan didn't look ready for that. So I'm not sure he was aware of that part of the matchup. Maybe half of his brain was like, oh, wait, is Evil Ryu one of the characters that has to block both or not? And I, I just, he just wasn't ready for the punish. Sagat is. Character is more custom to playing. Right, maybe. right. Sagat has to block both. Yep. So Ryan just holding on to that mid-range. Rust Proof Robot trying to look for something. You see him hoping that... Yeah, he was really hoping that Ryan Hart would run into a couple of those pokes. And then he was really hoping that Ryan would throw a fireball, hence focus dash to war. Either one of those game. Ryan Hart taking game one pretty convincingly. I like the aggressiveness from Rustproof Robot right at the start. He walked forward and went in for the attack, but then immediately teleports backwards. It's kind of one of those in-game body languages, like, I went in, oh, and you know what, never mind. So here comes Ryan Hart. Oh, just goes for the wow. throw. Wow, and that stun. Built a lot of meter with those whipped uppercuts. Right. Nice. Ryan found the opening. All the way through. All the way. Oh, Ooh. not the last part. I feel like Rustproof Robot could have gotten something there. Yeah. I'm not sure. Wow. Oh, wow. I'm just going to stomp on you. Wow. Stun you. That's twice that Ryan Hart has managed to get one hit stuns. Mm. And that, you just know, means tons of damage. Right. So. The follow-up combo is not prorated at yep. all. Yep. Mm -hmm. so. Oof. All right. So Ryan Hart takes that one. Pretty quickly. Definitely pretty quickly. <laughs> All right, who do we have coming up next? Oh, yeah, that's right. Our Kappa Mise versus DDJ Poison XXL from Canada. Mise right. is on the right of your screen there on the one player side. Shout outs to everybody watching at home. Really appreciate all of you guys tuning in here to Canada Cup. here on the Capcom Fighters channel. 
for some really, really great matches. We have so many good players. I mean, the one, like, I cannot believe before I made it down here to the venue, yeah. I was checking my Twitter and I saw Justin Wong's tweet yeah. that Storm Kubo was eliminated. Yes. From pools. Yeah, that's right. And he was basically the MVP yesterday outside of Dominion. And he couldn't even make it out of pools. Right. That's the kind of competition that's going on over here. But shout outs to all 20,000 plus viewers at home. Appreciate every single one of you tuning in to Capcom Fighters. Tuning in here to Capcom Cup, the last premier event where we're giving out points. Yes. So everybody here is trying to qualify for the Capcom Cup, which will be in early December. That's been a mostly year-long process, and you can qualify for it by winning an automatic qualifier and thereby qualifying outright. Or you can qualify by getting points. And points are given the better you do in a big tournament, more points you get. So there's two ways to reward people, right? You either qualify automatically or you just sort of over time show that you're solid enough. Right, right. Um, and this, this event does give out an automatic qualifier. Whoever wins this or gets, you know, however high place below somebody who has qualified uh, will be in the Kakwam Cup for sure. But it also gives out points. And that, those points are vital for some people in order to try to make it into the Capcom Cup. There are some people who, if they don't, you know, get top eight, or even there's some people if they don't get fourth or second by some calculations, then they cannot get in. So there is a lot on the line. One, one player who, who is like that is Mise, our Captain Mise, who I guess switched to the other side, on the left side of your okay, screen. Okay, okay. In, in order to have a likelihood of qualifying, he's got to get, you know, something up pretty high in the top eight. Means he needs to get through this. We are in pools. All right, let's see what DDJ Poison XXL is going to bring to this table. Another one of those dece deceiving names, Poison, but he's going with Seth. <laughs> Boy, I feel like this is a matchup where his character can just, just vanish. You know, if yeah. Makoto gets just a few setups, look at that. Makoto is known for dishing out damage. Yes. Seth is known for taking a lot of damage. Not a good combination. Yeah, luckily for him, he has more life now than he ever had in, Ultra Street, in, in Street Fighter 4. But still, he's one of the low life characters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. From Makoto at this point, even to just get like a counter hit fierce or something like that at this at this point mm -hmm. is the end. Okay, I was really surprised that he anti-aired with that standing strong instead of just a, a, a Fukiyage thing hits above Makoto so well. <laughs> Trying to chop the stand fierce, oh, you saw that? God. Look at that! Wow! Melting away. Ooh. Oh, okay, that's brave. I like, I like that a lot. You don't see like that, that happen very often. Oh, probably pile driver. Just messed the command up. Okay, another chance. Going in. Oh, nice block. Let me stay ready for the setups. Wow! Just ate the jump fears. It's just so hard to keep Mise out. Yeah. You know, it it can look like he's just holding up toward, or or as if he's just dashing around. But in fact, he's looking for moments when he thinks that the player is not going to be ready for that. I'm Oftentimes he's right. I'm gonna say one thing though. I was kind of iffy on that Makoto costume, but I love this color. The color is cool. I love this color. Oh what? my god! Just chop him out of the air. Oh. All right, one more mix up, Seth. Yeah, he's he's okay with that trade because he just wants to maintain the dizzy. Yeah. But you know he's out of that. But the damage uh, okay, it just wow. doesn't even matter. It doesn't oh. even matter. God. Match point now for Mise. I do feel that Poison XXL could be picking better spots and fighting for space a little bit better. Yeah, like I'd love to see him just move away at this point and maybe try to look for a new way in. No! Big Dragon Punch! That could lead to the end. See if he gets anything. No. Oh. Yeah, that, Chip, that's probably Chip will do it. Chip will do it. Oh, a chance! Hold on! Okay, Poison okay. XXL, did he wake up? Ah, uh, I think that's an interesting choice. Looking for backdash, but right, right. look at the patience. <laughs> well, that's it. <laughs> yeah, Poison XXL even is laughing a little bit. Wow. 
I mean, he yeah, says not. That one key point, like you said, where he did not backdash. He did not get caught by that tandem engine. And then he just sat there and blocked because he was like, anything that you do to me while I'm blocking here is not going to be worse than SPD. Right. So I'm just going to let you prove that you're going to SPD me. Right. Before I even start worrying. And sure enough, nothing. I wonder if he noticed also that Poison XXL seemed to have missed that pile driver in the corner. Mm. Where he ended up doing like jump dab back or something. Fierce. It was like was jump it, was back fierce, yeah. Yeah. Cause it's just one of those situations. When Poison XXL got him into that position, he was looking for big damage. He yeah. needed that comeback damage. So automatically SPD kinda left his head as an option and I think that's what Mise was betting on. And sure enough, he had the right read. He did. He absolutely had the right read. Because he just blocked his way and got himself to safety. Tan and engine came out. Ultra 2, done. Ooh, I'm looking forward to this. EGPR Balrog has sat down. Of course, you know him. One of the top players in North American fighting games. Not just Street Fighter, but fighting games. For the past several years. A big threat, that's for sure. And he's a, he's a player who... You know, if he gets a good enough spot in the top eight, he will secure himself a spot at Capcom Cup, but that's what it's going to take. Yeah. You know, he, does, he needs to make a deep run to get into the Capcom Cup. And his opponent is Jimmy Fierce. Ooh. Player who I did not know before, but who after watching yesterday during the team tournaments, uh, I came away very impressed by. Yeah. Look, I mean, everybody knows this. I'm a huge PR Balrog fan. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, a lot of people always say my commentary is a little biased towards him okay, and such. All right. I have no problems admitting that. It's, okay. It can't help it sometimes. But Jimmy Fierce made a fan out of me oh, yesterday. Yeah. It was awesome. So I'm conflicted now. Okay. Because <laughs> I would love to see Jimmy Fierce make a deep run in this tournament. Same here. Yeah. I would love to see him make a deep run. He's from Toronto. And uh, offensive Ryu is his style. And he's willing to take risks. He's willing to bring out dragon punches. Basically, he is Pat the Flip's dream. <laughs> Dude, I even saw Pat the Flip tweet about him yesterday. Did he you was really? Like, he, oh. was like, he, was, he basically said, Jimmy, fierce. <laughs> That's all you need yeah, to say. Yeah, I can see that being Pat's dream player. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he played great. And uh, Air tweeted about it a little bit just briefly, saying that he thought that Jimmy has a lot of talent too, but that it's lack of travel that sort of holds him back. Uh, I mean, look, lack of travel is going to be one of the hardest things, but the nice thing for him, and we've seen this a lot, at NorCal, at NCR, NorCal players do well. Okay. At SoCal, SCR players do well. You know, when it's in New York, all the, the New York players do well, Northeast players do well. When you're in your home area, it helps a lot. So... Jimmy Fierce can definitely play very well here at Canada Cup. Yeah. Because he's also got a lot of his team behind him. They're oh, yeah. all going to be cheering for him. In fact, uh, the guy who was giving me all the information on him, uh, Drewface, yesterday, is, in fact, here in attendance today, leading the chants for the Canada players. Oh, is that him doing it? That's, yeah, the that's one the goo boy from uh, the chat. I did not know that until he introduced himself. And I was oh, happy the one to in the tank top, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Sick. That was awesome. What is he on the chat? I mean the secret chat. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Your destiny will be determined here. It's not even secret, anyway. <laughs> yeah, um, I know. E EGPR ROG versus TOSF ANC Jamie Fierce. So it's Toronto Street Fighter, I think. And then I think ANC is a local arcade game center. That's what I heard. Pierrog already has the corner. It, this is not that easy of a, of a matchup for Ryu, especially a Ryu, or, or let's say if Ryu wants to throw fireballs in zone, that was really good. Yeah. Then it's not that easy, but I feel like that's not what Jimmy wants to do. I think he wants to go in. That's yeah. how it seemed yesterday. Maybe we'll see We'll see what his tact is now. Well, I really like that Jimmy Fierce already showed that he was willing to do that wake-up uppercut. Because that definitely seemed to be something that he was, <laughs> that he really liked, the Fierce uppercut. Woo. But you know what? I mean, he played really strong yesterday, but P.I. Rog, obviously, one of the strongest footsie Balrogs that you're ever going to run into. Yeah. But there to get again, that fierce uppercut. Oh, I think that was a punish on, okay, the, on okay. the close uh, Oh, okay, okay, close okay. dash punch. Oh, again, yeah. I, I feel like Jamie Fierce is looking to react to something. Yeah, I think he is. 
Maybe looking with Drac with Ultra, but that's very tough. Very tough to do. He did try that a bunch yesterday. He had Reaction Ultra in a few situations. So it's something he's capable of, but I guess not in that situation then. But he is, he is trying to play this zoning game. I, I really would have thought he would try to go in more, but... That's how he was doing it. Like I said, yeah. what I liked about it is that the way that he played the fireball game was so that he used the fireballs to get himself in. Yeah, that's how it seemed. But now it seems like he's playing a little nervous, a little bit more defensive. Well, I do like the fact that he's walked PR Rog backwards a little bit more this round. He's definitely been fighting for the screen space a little bit more. That's nice. true. Yeah, it's very even on life, too. Oh! Oh! Wow, Rog. Let it rip. <laughs> they had a little bit of a a stare down there. Yeah, a little game of chicken. And now Jimmy has the life lead. Oh! No dragon punch. Wow, that's very interesting fireball timing. Oh, wow. BR Rog recognized that Jimmy Fierce has been reacting to a lot of things just by couch blocking. And so he just caught him by surprise with that overhead. Wow. The lack of super. I feel like super could have been a big part of this matchup. Mm -hmm, yeah. Oh! 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 Jimmy Fierce had a nice attempt there with his own uppercut. But PR Rog using the EX headbutt. That was a risky EX headbutt, too. Mm -hmm, it was. I don't know about the eyes there. Is he a, is he a zombie? Dude, uh, you can just... You don't even have to finish the sentence with the eyes, you know. Let's see if Jimmy Fierce makes any adjustments. Pierre Og looks like he's pretty set. I was expecting more offensive play, but... You know, we'll see if he changes it up for that. And I don't want to make it seem like it's easy to do against somebody like PR Rog. He, he makes the footsie battles seem very, very difficult. You know, he makes it feel like you can't walk forward. Somebody with that control of normals and movement. Yeah, this is, this is tough. This is tough. Oh, here we go. Opportunity for Jimmy Fierce. Not only does he get to punish that, but he gets out of the corner too. Yeah, he can try to control. Oh, wow. Whoa, and it sucked him out of the corner. That was unfortunate. Yeah. Not intended, but got some damage. But again, it's just, it's oh. insignificant damage. You know what I mean? Because PR Rock ready with things like that. Oh, I don't know. Oh. I don't know. Oh, that's on reaction. Yeah. The, the problem is, anytime anyone activates an Ultra, you have enough time to charge up for uh, a special move if you're a charge character. Every single time. Which is why you've seen things like Guile throw Sonic Boom, someone does an Ultra, and then he Ultras them back right, right out of the Sonic Boom. You can actually keep charging during those Ultra startup animations. Ooh, a big whiff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Rog has really gotten the read at this point, it seems. On the timing, he needs to use the way he needs to stand against Jamie Fierce. Ooh. Oh, oh okay. okay, that was okay. really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smart stuff. He saw the jump, dashed under it. Oh, oh but here comes PR Rog with the corner carry into the head. Oh, he went for the reset. And Jimmy Fierce had enough meter, maybe, for uppercut. I mean, the uppercut would have given him yes. the meter. Yeah, so he should have did strong uppercut FADC in the ultra. Yeah, I think you're right. He does have a life lead. Oh, that's hard to keep. Yeah, PR Rog already showed how fast he can react to getting through a fireball. That's why Jimmy Fierce is just not throwing a fireball no, at all. Cannot throw a fireball at that at that range. Yeah. Absolutely. PR Rog also does a, a really oh, oh that's that might be it. Yeah, that was just an ill-advised uh, dragon punch. That's for yeah. sure. Unfortunate for Jimmy Fierce who. Played so well yesterday. Yeah, did, did so much, but I mean, look, you run into a you run into a, a, a wall like like PR Balrog, and it, it's rough. It's oh, you're, rough. you're right, you're right. But I, I do think that there were some things Jimmy Fierce could have done better. Mm -hmm. He was definitely playing tentative. He was yeah. definitely playing very. It's like you said, he was trying to react. He was almost like trying to see like, 
I'm trying to let PR Rog make a mistake, but uh, PR Rog wasn't making any of those mistakes. Right. So a couple of players that we saw yesterday, uh, Taldan from Canada. Yeah. He was on one of the Canada teams. I believe it was Canada 2. I think you're right. And then Dominion, who w was the victor in both team tournaments yesterday in the 3v3 and in the 5v5 international. For me, he was tournament. the most impressive player of anybody yesterday. As many strong players as are here, I thought he was just looked the best. Dude. He won both of those. Yeah, yeah you're right. The freaking meaty flash kicks. Yeah, his flash kick game is is it seems like a new thing for yeah. Dominion. Uh, <laughs> not so meaty flash kick, right? Meaty flash kick or grab, right? You know, but not just that. Flash kicks that are not saved by uh -huh. FADC. Flash kicks at range. Flash kicks on reaction to things. It was really funny because we even went up to him afterwards and we told him like, dude, that was amazing. Yeah. And he kind of looked at us like he was ashamed of the meaty flash kicks. Yeah, he started you know? shaking his head and I was like, don't shake your head. You know, like that was that amazing. That was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Keep doing it. Yeah. Because all, all the other players were saying the same. Uh-huh. They are yeah. all, they're all coming, up, coming up to him saying, wow, I haven't seen you play like that. That was amazing. Oh, interesting. So last pools there was H3. We were we had Shine listed in there. Okay. Shine actually just tweeted me and said that wasn't him. Oh. That was a different Shine. He oh. did not make it to Canada Cup. Ah oh, wow. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Yoink. Sorry about that. I know there are multiple people who go by Shine, including <laughs> in his own city. Yeah, he actually said I need to change my name. <laughs> <laughs> Yomi Dominion versus ANC Italian. Going with the Oni as he did yesterday. Wow! What? Okay. I have not seen that before. Oh my god. I don't know who, who this player is. I and what he did with defensive shell Dominion, but I like it. <laughs> I like it. This is this is psychic Dominion right now. He is doing everything right. He's so much more offensive. He takes so many more risks. There's something very relaxed about the way he's oh, yeah. playing. This is fantastic. Like, it doesn't look like he's... It just looks like he's just like, wee, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, this, this is really good. Okay, Ito then keeping, his, keeping himself in there. Good damage. Set up for himself, maybe? Wow, that was a really good sequence. Ito then now maybe for the win, depending on this mix-up. Oh, he got oh, the stun! there it is! Good stuff! So as much as we are praising Dominion, we have to say the same about Ito then. That sequence in the corner was excellent. That combo looked pretty tough, and he got the whole thing. And he got the setup afterward for the stun. That was awesome. Yeah, again, another one of the strong players here from Canada. They don't get to travel as much, so it's awesome that we get to come out here and see them here in Toronto. So Dominion going a bit back and forth now between sort of pushing his opponent and then walking back, walking back. See this? Really mixing it up there, making it tough for Ito then to know which one to look for at which time. Yeah, if Dominion can switch between that defensive shell Dominion that we know and that crazy offense Dominion from the first round and yeah. from last night. Yeah. If he can start maintaining a perfect balance between those two, Dominion is going to be one of the hardest people to beat. Not even just in the U.S., but anywhere. Yeah. Agreed. Great last round right there by Dominion. I really do like that change of pace that he went for in that round. But Ita then showed that, you know, he's not out of this. He can take rounds. He can dominate just as well. Ooh. It's maybe the start of it. I know Dominion has experience in this matchup, Sanford having played Oni a long right, time. Right. Okay. Well, ultimately, it's always down to the players. All right, sets up the cross-up so he can just get over there, out of the corner. And now here comes that pressure, Dominion. Oh, <laughs> that was unfortunate. Ooh, okay, a interesting. Whiff? How yeah. did that... I'm not sure if that was perfectly distanced with. Worked out in his favor. Yeah, even if not, Ito Dan took advantage of it. Oh, is that in range? Got him. Yeah, caught him on the fingertips. Here comes Dominion. Oh, oh! cross-up round. That was not intentional, but he'll take it. Oh, yeah. Match point now for Yomi Dominion. Oh, 
There's some full screen damage, but he goes in immediately. Oh, wow! That was a series of buttons. Oh, good patience from Dominion. Not falling for that stop twice in a row. Dominion sitting on a full bar, and he hasn't used any for EX Sonic Booms yet. And here comes Edeldon. Nice! Okay, pressure. Oh, that was really good. And he oh. got some part of it, but not the whole thing. Doesn't matter. He still has the life lead and the position lead. And he has as many resources as Dominion. Oh, Dominion just lost four bars. Oh, oh he can take this. Oh, here he goes. Oh, oh, wow. Oh. Itadan just got too much in need yeah. of getting, finishing that round. He wanted to get, you know, maybe EX Fireball through a Sonic Boom, maybe hit him, hit Dominion like that, but Dominion scoped it out. He takes the match. Tough draw for Ital Dan. He's a good player. But Dominion, he just looks like, really, for me, he's the, he's the person to beat. This whole this weekend, tournament. yeah, yeah. Uh, this weekend he's just been looking so sharp this yeah. whole weekend long. So definitely agree with that. Yeah, if you guys want to follow along, of course, with the brackets, they 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 try to update them as fast as they can. Okay, but I, I know uh, what it's it's challengecom users slash Canada Cup, and go over there and just find the Canada Cup brackets over there. That's right. Yep. Okay. So we are in the last set of pools, the I pools again. Yeah. But again, thanks everyone for tuning in. For this Capcom Premier event, winner of this event automatically qualifies, also gets 256 seeding points. Second place person gets a valuable 128 points. Yeah. And then yeah. third place, of course, 64, and it drops down there, from there. There are people so. who, who even getting sixth place would really mm -hmm, secure them mm -hmm. a spot. So, I mean, yeah. the, the math at this point is is good enough that we we have a pretty good understanding of who needs to finish where right. to to move on. Like I mentioned, PR Balrog is one of the players who needs to get about six thereabouts mm -hmm. in order to have a you know pretty certain chance that he's into Capcom. Yeah, Club. and it's really interesting too because even well. let's say there's 16 people who are gonna 15, 16 people qualify, 15 or 16 qualified by points. 15. Only because Mo Momochi is, took one right, of the Right, so spots, Momochi right? qualifies automatically because he won last year. Right. Uh -huh. Then 16 people that's qualify right, right. automatically yeah, yeah, okay, this okay. year. Then 15 people qualify via points, 32 in total. Even if you're a 16th or 17th spot, you still have a chance because there's still a couple of premier events after Canada Cup. Yeah. One of the highest players in points, for example, is Luffy. If he wins DreamHack Winter, He's no longer a points player because I think he's at the top in points. Yes. So he would open up that next person down. You know, I think uh, another player such as like Punko, he could win the Asia event that's coming up. And if he wins that one, then that also drops it down as well. So getting to 16th or 17th in points right now is still important. Well, in the meantime, let's talk about Ryan Hart versus Snafu. Uh, one of the top Dawsons in North America. Some people say the best. And so Ryan Hart. Rather than going with something like Sagat or, or with Evil Ryu or something else, he goes back to the Yun that he played for quite a while. And I think that's definitely the right choice. Yeah. It's a tough matchup for Dalson. So much mobility on Yun's side. But Snafu beat Misei Makoto last <laughs> night. Okay, I can't stress how fantastic that was. That was so he has, he has the ability to beat anybody. That was one of the highlight matches from last night for sure. For sure. So Reinhardt, pretty convincing first round. It can be hard for Dawson to find the right spot. Oh, wow. We've actually, I mean, yeah, interesting yeah. enough, one of the first premier events where Dawson is playable in Street Fighter V, but we've seen some impressive Dawson play throughout this tournament so far. Ooh. But things are not looking good. And again, like you said, just the, one of the roughest matchups. Look at that. Four strongs from Young in that combo. Oh. You know it. That was some good work by Ryan Hart, oh. giving himself the right advantages, and then even once he had it, you know, he it's not just the character here. He had the steep dive kick uh, in expectation of a slide, even. I mean, slides come very rarely from Dalsum, and Dalsums often use it to slide underneath a dive kick, but Ryan Hart scoped it out. So, I mean, he's it's not just the character here. He is, he's putting in work. That was almost really sick to go punish that. <laughs> oh, nice. No, oh, not no, safe. no, no, yeah, not on Yun. That's right. Oh, empty jump. Yep. When you see that situation, when you whip that throw and they neutral jump, you're so scared. You're like, oh, I got a block in time. And so he just went empty instead. Uh, Ryan looks like he's running away with this. Snafu from Montreal. MTLSF. 
Montreal Street Fighter. And already he's into the corner. Already he's got a fight fight. Okay, at least he can get out. Maybe time to mount some offense, some defense. <laughs> right back in. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, hold on, though. Go. Okay, okay, okay. Can he get out again? Can he find his way? Oh, nice. Getting that back fierce in the air. Good call out with that medium kick. Looking for the dive kick. Oh, well placed. Okay, I really like that harassment right there. That's good range for that. Oh, perfect. All right. That Dash is back. Exactly Ultra setup. What he needed. And delayed wake up gave Snafu more time. Don't do delayed wake up in those setups, folks. Did That's he tough. just dive kick and, and like his toe touch that Yoga Inferno? I'm not sure if that was the back strong that hit him. Because he caught on fire and then back strong oh, hit him. Okay, it yeah, was yeah. very weird looking. Yeah. There, there is a pretty wide hurt box actually on those dive kicks. Okay. okay, you know, that's fine. Getting jabbed out of the air like that. But oh, man. Just as I say that, now you got to watch out for red focus combos. Oh, yeah. Right back in. Reinhardt's not letting go. Yeah, I like the aggressiveness, the aggressiveness that Ryan is oh. playing with. Oh, he's looking for another dive kick. That creates a juggle for super, but oh, that's risky. I'm surprised Ryan has not come out with anything like a, a dragon punch up close, because there have been a lot of buttons coming out of Snafu's side. Oh, super, Link, yes! There it is, same trick we saw him use on Mise. Everybody forgets Dawson has an overhead and it links into super, Ooh. it's good. Well, it's not, you know. <laughs> nice! Wow, Snafu taking that round from Ryan Hart. Oh, Ryan, taking that game from yeah, Ryan Hart. Yeah, he took the game. Very impressive play. It seemed like Ryan Hart was just running away with it, but those last two rounds were much better for Snafu. Yeah, Snafu beating Mise Makoto and one game of uh, Ryan Hart, Yun. Oh, the reaction. Do you see the slide on reaction to, to, to Dash Punch? Very this is one nice. of the reasons why people say he's the best Dalsum in North America right now. Oh, wow, that was cool. Oh, but he gets the throw, and now he's out of, but just like that, look at this. Look, the stages are wide in this game, but Yun pushes you yeah, back in right so in fast. He's yeah. right in there. A lot of stand tech attempts. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, that's super unsafe. Yeah. He was hoping to hit him out of something. Okay, counters the overhead. See dash punch come in. Oh, here we go. Here's the ultra setup. All right. No he could take it on this. Yeah. Great mix up. I mean, great block, I should say. Oh, oh. if that had been EX. Oh. Oh, no. oh, he got it. How? Was that an intentional whiff to make it look like he was? No, no. I'm giving him too much credit there. But he turned it into something. Wow, match point. Snafu. And no surprise, the crowd is behind him here. Canadian crowd, Canadian got, player. And he's got a lot of meter, so he's got a lot of those EX up flames. Great block. Ooh, he knew yeah. the setup. He knew he was coming back around to the other side. Well, yes, I was going to say, oh that's so God. good that Snafu has had that, con not consistently, but several times. And that's not hard, or not easy. But your m life can melt away against y oh Young. Oh, boy. He is not safe by any stretch of the imagination. Here he comes. Ryan's got to worry a little bit about Super. From the front. Oh, oh what? 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 What is going on? That was Dragon Punch from the other side. Oh, Ultra, and that's going to do it. Snafu is going to win versus Ryan Hart. Dalsum versus Yun against all odds. Ryan Hart picking that character specifically as a counter pick, yes. and it didn't work out. What a match from Snafu. He started bringing in much better responses to Ryan Hart's movement. Like I said, I do think that Ryan Hart sort of let him off the hook by not uh, insisting on things like Dragon Punch up close. There were mm. lots of back shorts, lots of stand techs on the side of uh, Snafu, but wow. Right. Top, top level player. You were talking about how Ryan Hart has, has been very solid lately. And uh, for him, he needs to do well this weekend. And it's interesting because... For Capcom Cup. I know that Pro Fluke won the run back versus Filipino champ. Yes. But Dalsum causing a problem for the European players here in this tournament. Filipino champ sending Pro Fluke into losers with Dalsum That's right. in a matchup that he shouldn't have won necessarily. And then here, Snafu sending Ryan Hart in the loser's bracket in a matchup that I don't think... It's a tough matchup. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. But he played it very well. Of course, when I say shouldn't have won, I just mean on paper, you yeah, know, no, know. matchup charts. 
All right, so we're going to get back to Hagijin. This is R Kappa Hagijin on the left of your screen. His opponent is R slash SF Robertson. R A W. Robertson. <laughs> what do you think about that, James? I wonder if that's any. Oh, is that What's that a reference to? I don't know. You know? It's cool. It's a cool name. Robertson. <laughs> Maybe his name is Robertson, but he just made him. He made it raw. <laughs> you don't think that's cool? I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> I'm down, I'm down with it. <laughs> so this is pool I4. Same heart that Ryan Hart, wow, Snafu, Ryan Hart, Alex Vai, and Hagejin are in the same pool. Is that what? accurate? Oh my god, that is an evil pool. Yikes. Yeah, and Snafu wasn't even listed as one of the players that we got on Notable Players. Here. Right. All right, Robertson's Hard to going catch everybody. with Honda. Honda can fight Zangief, but it's nothing like it was in all the old games. Yeah, it's definitely it's it's evenish on both sides, you know. It's, wow, maybe not if you react like that. Yeah, did you see that reaction earlier? That was amazing. <laughs> Or maybe bet. I don't know. Maybe he's just trying it, and it was at the right spot. So now, once Geef has a life lead and it's on E Honda, hard for him to approach. It's one of those Ooh. matches where it's, it's hard for both sides to approach. So getting the life lead early, is very important. And this is this is really what I think most highly of Hagijin for is the, his neutral game. Oh wow! Zangief. Yeah, just he's gonna spend all the meter. Why not? He gained it in that round. Yeah. Zangief is one of those characters that, even though, despite how good EX Green Hand is, like, every Zangief player I see goes for that combo whenever they have full meter. Oh, yeah. It's just it's just worth it. There's so much value in there. It's not just the damage, which is significant. It's also the fact that now you're up close. You went from being far away to right in Zangief's wheelhouse. Yep, and he, Zangief has one of the scariest vortexes in the game with that short jump, regular jump. Ooh, a little bit too fast on the SPD. Might have still been in hit or block stun. Oh! Oh, oh I don't know why he would be buffering there. Interesting. Looking for maybe crouching jab. I mean, Honda's buttons are not that... Hittable? Yeah, they're not really for that right there, but I don't know. Okay, challenge from Robertson. Nice. Punish on the Lariat. Interesting. Usually when Honda headbutts you, he's the one who whiffs the command throw to build meter. I think Hagijin was expecting him to, was going to counter build meter. Oh, very nice. So Robertson definitely doing better now. Oh, even getting some chip. Very even on life, hard to know who's ahead, and that means that they both have to fight. Oh, great timing on that. Yeah, that was very good. Oh, here's Robertson, all right. He's a hit away from taking this. Yeah, and he's got, a, he's got two bars, which is perfect. He, you're not going to see him let go of back. But he also has to worry that if he oh if he sticks Ooh, something like that, that out scary. oh my god yes that was I I agree that was scary that was scary if that fierce right there had been hit by any button from Geef it was definitely gonna get buffered into EX hand red focus that was the game yep okay Robertson I like the ranges that he's jumping at Hagijin makes it a little bit more awkward for him to anti air with the lariat and he's been getting a lot of payout with that jump fierce but that time Hagijin makes sure to walk up close enough oh OS Ooh, and the OS backfired yeah it did he was expecting EX headbutt probably You're probably right correct yeah. headbutt so now a more significant life lead for Robertson but unfortunately for him not a lot of meter and you see Hagijin how important that meter is oh, he's gone yeah. back whiffed an SPD he's whiffed a lariat he's pretty much at the point now where the combo will give him the yes. meter oh, but he builds the life he builds it to be sure anyway oh and Robertson spent his one bar this is a problem okay he's got one bar back how much of a defensive wall can he be is the question Oh, Ooh. a pretty good one. A pretty good one. That was awesome. And as a result, Hagejin now does not have red focus. EX hand red focus. So it's a tougher road for him. Oh, he really wanted walk up jab, it seemed, or walk up pile driver, it seemed. Oh, oh Robertson representing RSF. So Hagejin is 
<laughs> considered by many to be the best Zangief, certainly one of the best Zangiefs. You see Mago come up and he was like, "Look, here's some advice on how he's like, no, I got, don't worry, okay. I got this, I got this." But he, he is considered one of the best Geefs. Oh, yeah. For sure. I, like I said, many people consider him the best Look, Zangief. There's three Zangiefs that are always in that conversation, and Hagajin is easily in there sure. every single time. But he doesn't travel very often. Yes. And, uh, you know, you always have to wonder, as, as strong as somebody can be, when you travel, it is different. You know, it does... You, you're never quite as strong in a new situation. Right, right. But that's what's, uh, like, I, I said this earlier on stream, it's so cool about the Capcom Cup, we've seen more cross-ocean travel than ever. Well, Hagenjin is looking pretty good here. So he might have been, <laughs> he might have been right when he <laughs> said to Mago that he didn't need any uh, assistance. Because that was pretty convincing. Okay. So there's EX hand red focus. It's on deck. Harassing with that, huh? Oh, wow. Could have been punished. Hagaji didn't get it. That EX uh, headbutt. Nice. You know, Robertson has just been picking really good buttons and has really good timing on when he goes for that counter, like that EX headbutt. Really well timed. He's a good player. Yeah, but no meter now. Here we go. Vortex time. Which one? Switch side. Goes for the cross up. Guess what? You're back in exactly the same position. Gets out of there, but chase down. And just like that, like 80% of his life all melted away. Ooh. Oh, Robertson finally gets out. But you see the value of that EX hand red yeah, focus? Yeah, exactly. That's what, it, that's what it can do. All that was because Zangief got the crumple. But Robertson has a life lead right now. Barely, but it's, it's significant. Enough. Yeah, it's real. That is like some of the most important five pixels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But well, Hagajin get, can get the kill with just about any hit. I like the jump backs from Robertson because he knows that Hagajin wants the Ultra 2. So it's going to be scary to try to anti-air headbutt perhaps. Look at the time. 13. 12. Oh, the risk! Oh! oh but that's Robertson a lot of here. meter to yeah. lose. And now Mago's like, look, you do need my advice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, match point, RSF Robertson against our Kappa Hakujin. Are we going to see another upset from one of these strong Canadian players that, that we just don't get to see a lot of? He has been playing this match so well. I love all the buttons. He has been has the right strategy. He's been playing it very smart. And just right there, Hakujin tried to bait out a headbutt or something and nothing from Ro Robertson. Ooh. I don't know. Oh! Yeah, this is bad now. Yeah, this is exactly where... Oh, that's punish. Yeah, that fierce, is it. that it? Not oh, that wasn't fierce. Okay, there you go. Okay, there it is. Hagajin. Getting his like, way back in there. He's tied now. Oh, and look at that look on Robertson's face. I don't like that sigh. I don't like that I don't either. like that exhale. Gotta stay confident in your own game plan. And he's been doing really well. I wonder what Mago's telling him right now. Looks like I I'm sure Hagiji knows the matchup, but maybe Mago has some extra scope. I wonder if Mago has any Honda experience, because that was his character in CBS too. I wonder if he actually played Honda at first or anything like that. Nice. Okay. Good start for Hagajin. That's the second time that Hagajin... Oh, that's the first time we've seen the Ocho throw. Yeah. Good adjustment from Robertson. Uh-huh. I like it. Challenging Zangief. No Zangief expects a command grab. I can tell you that. Yeah. Even the best. So now it's... Time for the wall. Robertson just playing very patiently. Ah. Yeah, right there, Hagajin just saw that one little twitch inch forward and he knew he could walk, he could jump. Oh. Yeah, that's punished. Oh, no. I, yeah, I don't know. There, there are moments when Robertson is very patient and others where he's, 
I think begins to panic just a little bit. Yeah, this is definitely, I was just about to say, kind of almost like a mini meltdown right now. He's got to re, he's got to gather himself again. In fact, at this point in time, it might even be in his best interest. Oh, okay. Ooh. Oh, he's the EX. He, he, he's playing this to win. Oh, yeah. He's going what I tell you, Zangief players and command grabs. Okay, nice blocking again by Hagujin, who has all the meters. Still a stare down. I mean, it's on Robertson to try to come yeah, in. Oh, very nice. 20 seconds left. 20 seconds. And you know what? Smart for Hagujin to actually not use the red focus like they always do. You always see Zangius when they have that meter, they use it even when it's going to kill. Save the bar that way. See, that, that one unfortunate thing, though, is that Robertson's little um, double Ochio gambit kind of got shown in the last round and right. in a round that I don't know if he was going to win. So that's why I was about to say, I, if I was Robertson, I would have just been like, maybe a few errant jab hand slaps to build meter, you know, a screen away or something like that. Save a lot of that juice for the neck for the round two. Right. Uh, I don't like the jump toward. It's cost him in a, both of the last rounds, in fact. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, what a read. <laughs> I what like a it. read. I like it. Okay, Robertson with a good life lead. Now, He's got to be careful. Like, if he takes a step forward, get ready to jump back fierce, you know? Because Hakujin, like I said, jump at him as soon as he walked forward. You can't keep walking back like this because you're just going to put yourself in the corner. And you're going to let Geef build some meter. Right with there, him. jump back fierce. Well, but, yeah, he had a good response. Yeah. Big life lead now oh, for Robertson. Oh, good. I like that. Oh, I like the, the little bit of offensive switch from Robertson. Ooh, he okay. got it. All right, folks, it's Here match point. Go. Match point between RSF Robertson from Canada and Hagijin, Arkapa Hagijin from Japan, considered one of the best Zangiefs. And he is going toe to toe, final round. Like we said, he, he was looked like he was panicking last round, but I, I feel like he's gathered himself a little bit, calmed down a little bit. Okay. There was that escape. jump back. Yeah, just escape, get out of there. So now full bar for Hagijin. Any hit is going to lead into EX hand, red focus. Zangief's up close. We've seen how important that is. I do like the the neutral jumps every once in a while from him too, but not not doing it too much. And jump back again. Excellent patience right there. Yeah. Robertson just trying to hold the fort down. He is getting backed up. But it's okay. He's oh. Done. Oh, that is really unfortunate for Hage Jean. He saw the walk forward and he tried to buffer it, but Robertson with the last split millisecond block. And you can hear right now the audience feels it. They they know Hage Jean lost that meter. Oh, oh it's he's an escape. Out. Yeah. He'll take that. He'll oh, yeah. take that. The audience is definitely into this now. Of course, we're in Canada. Robertson from Canada. Oh, he's been challenging. And all the great key Ooh, moments. Can Hagiji oh, make this comeback at this point? I'm not sure. He has oh, no whip meter. punish! And that's gonna do it! Robertson has defeated Hagiji here in Canada. Snafu already one of the Canadian players with a huge upset over Ryan Hart. And now Robertson. Look at that smile on his face. Oh yeah. Defeating. He should be a happy man. He played it very well. Wow. Very well. Especially in that last the last couple of rounds. He had excellent patience. He had uh, jumping away and when Geef was coming in. He played command grab mix-ups on Zangief. He had the footsies. He was just playing at 100% right there. That was yeah, very that impressive. Yeah, that first round of game three, I thought it was all going downhill for Robertson. Yeah, me too. You know, he used a lot of that at that comeback. He started panicking a little bit, and I was so scared that that was going to be the end at that point. But he buckled down, and he just really went back to that game that won him the first game. Yeah. He went back to that game plan. Well, I'm sorry for Hockey Gene because, I, you know, obviously I was a Geef player and I'm always rooting for Geefs, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it, I would love to see him at more events. Of course, he's still in. I don't want to act like he's out. He's, right, yeah, he, yeah, the yeah, path uh -huh. through losers is going to be tougher. I'd love to see him at more events because I really feel like part of why he was into losers just now is the newness, yeah. the unfamiliarity hasn't been of this kind of a situation. Hasn't traveled enough. Yeah. All right. Well, it looks like next we have coming up is going to be Misei, also from Japan, going up against the Prince 4D. Another player that I believe we saw on the Canada team yesterday. 
the Canada team didn't do so well yesterday, but right now they are making up for it with some amazing yes. play here. Like I said, Snafu took out Ryan Hart using Yun, mm -hmm. which is one of those really, really terrible matchups. And then uh, now we just saw Robertson defeat Hagajin. Crazy, crazy stuff. But exciting. I mean, look, this is how you come into an event like this. You know all these players I hear. You know that they could all, you know, they're, 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 they're internationally known. Everybody yes. knows these guys. No fear. No fear. You come in here expecting to win. And then you're Robertson and you sure enough defeat Hagajin, one of the best Zangief players on the planet. RSF beat R Kappa. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> wow, I didn't even think of that. Hey, I don't know why I didn't think of it either, but thanks to Twitter for pointing it out. So, that's the same username on Reddit. Nice. Well, shout outs to apparently you slash Robertson. All right, so the Prince 4D against R Kappa Mise. It was. Prince with Evil Ryu, Misei we know with Makoto. And again, this is a matchup where a character risks just imploding when Makoto hits. But, you know, of course, Evil Ryu does have a great mid-range game. Excellent damage of his own. Oh, that is oh. costly. Yeah. I mean, Evil Ryu obviously can dish out the damage just as much as Makoto. But Makoto is just one of those momentum characters. Once you get to once. You just really have to be, you have to find that ability to defuse the offense all of a sudden. And it's its so hard to do once she gets in on you. Right back in the corner, again. Oh, missed the axe kick yeah, and yeah, punish, yeah. nicely done. Oh, didn't see it in time. Mise just looking for a way to navigate. Looking for a moment, you can get in. Okay. Wake ow, up, Axe ow, kick. Ow, Man. No, one more mix-up. Oh, hey! Okay, okay. Gonna get some good damage off of this. And will he pressure now? Will he zone? Oh, oh he well. He did try to go for a little pressure. He did try. A little pressure, yeah. Oh, again, missed the Axe Kick a couple of times. Amisa ends up taking this game, but jump the yeah. fact that he missed Axe Kick a couple of times. Oh, boy. Oh yeah, you see it on his on his face. He does not like it. When when you have standards as high as Mises, you know that's right. You want to be <laughs> entirely on top of your game. Oh man, that a head tilt from every player. Yes, everybody does it. <laughs> Always almost followed up by that inhale. Yeah. You know. <laughs> wow! Jump in. Oh yeah, oh. he says really finding the seams right now. Oh, yeah, I think for a second Prince Forty thought he was close enough to get her to jump over him, but then just the axe kick came down. You always have to remember she has that option with that axe kick. Me say waiting. Oh, the prince had a hit. Well, he didn't have any focus meters, so nothing else he could do there. Oh no! Trying to save himself probably, but it only. Led to even worse situation. Now one reset away. Or just pressure. Oh, yeah. Okay. There it is. Chip damage did it. Pretty good look overall from Misei. Like I said, there were those couple of misses, and he didn't seem happy about it. But other than that, played great. I love how he navigated around the fireballs. Execution, other than X Kex, looked look great. He's a big threat here, and he does need to do well. Right, right. He needs to get about, you know, top six-ish to have a good chance at getting into the Capcom Cup. So, and we've seen how tough the competition is here. It's not just people from foreign lands. It's not mm -hmm. just USA, Japan, UK, Singapore, etc. It's also Canada. Canada itself, very strong. I mean, they've, they've had some players who have shown that 
they're really capable of it. Yeah, really making a name for themselves here at this event. <laughs> and it, it's that's one of my favorite things. I know I talk about this a lot, but it's just like whenever we see these players that we just don't know because they don't yeah. get to travel as much, but then they come out here, they do well. I mean, shout outs to everybody on Twitter. They always give us like backstories yeah. for a lot of these guys, their histories and such like that. I love learning about all these players from Agreed. all these different areas. It's, it's one of my favorite things about Street Fighter that people play from everywhere and they're all good like everywhere you go yeah look street fighter 4 has been out for a long time now and the people who are still playing it they know the game all right there's <laughs> exactly even first round second round matchups at this point are are real you know you mm -hmm. have to take them seriously mm -hmm. uh everybody is good yeah I, I mean i'm assuming ian who we saw earlier beat alex by also from canada as well it did say that yeah okay so a lot of these upsets coming from these Canada players, they're looking really strong right agreed. now. Yeah, agreed. Well, coming up next, we have Snafu versus Robertson winners finals of Pool I-4. <laughs> An all-Canada winners finals of at awesome. least one pool.